All right, welcome back to another episode of I'm Not the Book Expert, but she is. I'm Maggie, one of your hosts. And I'm Rachel, your other host. And today we are talking about our top 10 books of 2021, which I guess kind of means we're both the experts and not the experts at the same time. Indeed, because there are definitely books on my list that I know you haven't read, and there are definitely books on your list that I haven't read. I do think Rachel is more of the expert in this one, though, because most of the books on my list are books that she recommended to me, and we're like, man, you should read this, or else I won't be your friend anymore, and so I That's did, and it turned out I liked Entirely that. true. Not entirely true. I never threatened to stop being your friend. She did threaten me, though. Did you hear that, though? She was like, I didn't threaten you that way, but I did threaten you a little bit. It was more like, Maggie, you have to read this book because it is so good and I need you to read it because I need to talk to somebody about it. So it wasn't really a threat. It was just more me being a little bit selfish. Okay, I guess I can forgive that. Um, Okay, good, because I didn't actually do what you accused me of. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, we... just gotta let me exaggerate a little bit okay (laughs) as long as you don't mind okay but I'm also going to call you out for the drama are you the drama (laughs) I am the drama (laughs) all right so I mean I guess since this is our first like official episode maybe we should talk a little bit about us and what we're doing here other than putting words out into the internet like everybody else I mean, that's probably a good idea, right? Probably. Get a little bit of our our listenership in on who we are. Our listenership, which is probably just going to be like my mom and like two people we know from school, which if you're out there, guys, hello. Thanks for listening. We love you. Mm-hmm. We do love you and very much appreciate you. Indeed. So Rachel, tell me about yourself. Uh, so Actually, I think before we get started, we should talk about how we met each other real fast. Oh, yeah. We didn't actually address that. Oh, yeah, we um, probably should. <laughs> just a little bit. So Maggie and I met in college. Uh, she graduated two years after me, but we were both in the same English program. I switched my major, so I was in all of the intro to English classes as at the same time as Maggie. So that's how we kind of met. Mm-hmm. We had to, we were in like... I don't know what class we were in. We were in some intro to English class and we had to write a bunch of research papers. And one of them was about Julius, it was about Julius Caesar. And I still don't like Julius Caesar to this day. Um, <laughs> and I have mixed feelings about it as I now have to teach it as a teacher. Mm. Rest in peace, Rachel. But we were in the same like workshop group because apparently our professor was like, huh, this person seems smart. We'll put her with all the upperclassmen. I don't know why he thought that, but... And that was the same class where I found out I didn't actually have to take those classes. Oh, yes, that's right. I yep. forgot about that. I was so mad. But, but look at it this way. If, it hadn't, if you hadn't taken the classes you didn't need, we never would have met, probably. Indeed. So, like, there are many reasons I am thankful for taking those classes, but also very frustrated that my advisor wasn't like, hey, you don't need those. Go and take other classes that you might want to take. Hmm. Yeah, that does sound very frustrating. <laughs> but but it's all good. Both turned out moderately okay anyway. We're both graduated yeah. now. Yes, we are both graduated. So I graduated in 2018, very much pre-pandemic. <laughs> and I <laughs> what's that like? <laughs> oh, it's well, it's weird, let me tell you. Uh, because I started teaching pretty much as soon as I graduated and then had to teach at the beginning and now continuing through the pandemic. And that has been chaotic, to say the least. Um, I absolutely love it, though. For the most part, today's a good day to ask me if I like my job, because the answer is yes. And I focus mostly on literature analysis and then academic composition. So I am preparing students for life post high school. That's Maggie. Good. We should be preparing for life post high school, because that's what I know. Of your it's, life is. It's what? I know. No, Isn't that I don't crazy? believe it. <laughs> to be honest, at this point in my life, I'm like, if I see 30, I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I 
anyway, that was a little bit dark. Um, I guess I'll talk a little bit about what I do. So yeah. Rachel graduated in 2018. I graduated two years later in 2020. Woohoo! So Woo-hoo. cool and quirky. Um, so yeah, that was something. <laughs> I remember um, when they sent us all home for spring break in 2020, and then they were like, you're not coming back until Easter. And then it was like, psych, you're never coming back. Um, but I was in desperate need of a haircut. I have really short hair and I hate it when it grows too long. Um, and I said to my mom, can we just like take the electric razor that you use for dad and just like, like shave my head? And she's like, well, wait and see if your graduation gets canceled. And then it got canceled and I shaved my head. Like I was the protagonist in some terrible rom-com. I love it. I so love that's it. what my spring of 2020 was like. And I did eventually get a job. Um, So I actually am now like an admin assistant at the university that we both graduated from. Um, I had a job there when I was a student and then that office, that specific office had some turnover in 2020 and they were like, hey, we'll give you a job if you come back. And I was like, sure. Um, So I moved out of my parents' house and came out here and now I have a job. So it's kind of a weird job to summarize because I do a lot of sort of also, I'm sorry, my chair keeps clicking. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's all good. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but yeah, there's just kind of like weird and random stuff that I have to do sometimes. And But normally I do a lot of like answering phone calls and emails and typing up drafts of different speeches and like sermons and things like that. So um, yeah, it's I like it because it's a steady job and it actually gives me a lot more flexibility than I thought a normal quote-unquote normal office job would um I always bring a book to work with me so I could like read over my lunch break and things like that or sometimes I write over my lunch break or sometimes I cry but it's not because of work it's usually because of other things like the reading and writing like the reading and writing yes those are what make me cry (laughs) and then Maggie, being the delightful human that she is, will send me some of those emotional readings and writings, and then I end up crying in front of my classes. But it's fine. It's fine. I didn't say you had to read them when you were in front of your class. I just said, here's something for you to have when I know, you but feel like, the urge. I normally read them during my lunch break, uh, and I have kids in my room during lunch. Um, it's purely by my choosing, but then they'll like look over and I'll be like, <laughs> and they're like, what is wrong? And I'm like, so much, but it's fine. <laughs> like, have you looked outside recently? <laughs> Do you not remember your classmate as I continue to have tears just streaming down my face? Ah, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so that's a little bit about us. And I'm sure you'll learn more than you ever wanted to know about me throughout the course of this podcast. I would say both of us. Okay, learn more about both of us than you ever wanted to know or needed to know, but that's fine. (laughs) But it it all works out in the end, right? The internet is for vulnerability with strangers, and I will stand (laughs) on that box. No, that's not what I was trying to say. Die on that hill? Die on that hill. Yep, there we go. (laughs) Stand on that box. (laughs) Yeah, I might have been an English major, but the words are not, um, I'm not good at the words. Words are hard. Words are so hard, indeed. Yeah. So Maggie, transitioning into our next thing, do we want to give our Goodreads recap for this year as they stand right now and then jump into our top 10? Sure. Do you want to go first or should I? Uh, What if we bounce back and forth? We do like our reading goals, we both list them, then we do our actual books read and kind of go back and forth. Yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense than what I just suggested. So, <laughs> but I will let you start with the first thing. Okay, so to provide a little context before we get started, yes, I'm an English teacher. Yes, I was an English major. But while in college, I actually kind of stopped reading for fun <gasps> and recently got, I know it's a shocker. Um, also didn't read for fun for my first two years of teaching. I know actually two and a half years of teaching. I didn't start until... January again this year, and I was kind of on the struggle bus. I wanted to read 52 books this year, so averaging about one per week, and I kind of kicked it into high gear come April, but Maggie, what was your beginning goal for this year? 
My beginning goal for the year was 70 books. I'm trying to remember what my goal was last year. I'm actually going to look it up now. Um, you do that. Because I totally, so part of the thing that happened last year was, um, okay, my last year goal was 65 and I ended up reading a hundred books, but that was mostly Holy because, cow. But let me, let me clarify. I am a full supporter of graphic novels are real books but I also read them a lot faster. And in the spring of 2020, I read through the entire Full Metal Alchemist manga series, of which course is 27 volumes. I love that. So that very much inflated my um, books that I read in 2020. So anyway, but I was like, eh, I will still probably read about 70 books in 2021. And I did. Well, we can talk about that in a second here. In, but yeah, my goal, was, second. my goal was 70 books. I also want to kind of go off on a little tangent of something mm -hmm. you just said and say that I think we both agree with this, but physical books, rented books from the library, ebooks, audiobooks, graphic novels are all legitimate forms of reading. Oh, yes, absolutely. And 100%. So many, so many of the books that I read this year, even, and a lot of the books that we'll talk about in a minute were audiobooks, um, a lot of graphic novels and comics. Um, if it has words, if you either saw the words or you heard the words, it's a book. It is a book. And, and we, that, that is a hill we will die on that together. Is a hill we will die on together. Um, and actually, I should clarify sometimes books don't have words, sometimes they just have pictures, and that's okay too. Indeed. Uh, fun fact about this school year I taught Frankenstein to my AP Lang kids, mm -hmm. and one of their options was to read Frankenstein in a graphic novel format. Huh. I really like yeah. that. I've still never read Frankenstein, but we can talk about that another time. It is eventually my goal to get you to read it, but we will get there later. <laughs> we, we can talk about that another day. That'll be definitely one of those instances where Rachel is the expert and I have no idea what I'm doing. I just really love Frankenstein. <laughs> I know you do. I always send her um, memes about Frankenstein or Mary Shelley, even if I don't and I understand them. <laughs> I either 100% agree with them or I say, um, but actually, <laughs> and then it's a whole conversation. <laughs> um, but so my goal was 52 books this year. I read 78 and Woo! I plan on finishing two more before the end of the year. That is very exciting. What two more of you plan to finish? I... I'm hoping to finish the Jasmine Throne because that would be my J book for my book alphabet. And then oh, I need yes. to find a Z book. Um, I have the Zigzag Girl, which is a murder mystery that I'm thinking about reading, but I also kind of want to do an audio book. And my library does not have the Zigzag Girl as an audio book. So I'm kind of weighing my options. Working through the Jasmine Throne right now, it is a thick book. And the audiobook is 20 hours. So I gotta Eesh. gotta figure out what I'm doing with that. But I have time. I am now on winter break. So I have all the time in the world to figure it out. Uh, isn't winter break nice? So nice. I should I should mention I also get a winter break, even though I'm not a teacher because I work at a school. And so like there's no students there, and they're just like, eh, we're closed, go home. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we're both on winter break and it is delightful indeed um, so my goal was 70 books as of today which is december 24th um i have read 73 books i would what, what? kind of like to read two more before the end of the year but i also don't know if that will happen um i'm doing a re-listen of one of my favorite books which i will talk about later so stay tuned um so I might read that, I might finish that before the end of the year, but I'm also not really rushing to finish it before the end of the year. We'll see what happens. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, can I also just give a little humble brag about myself for a minute? Okay, sure. <laughs> so again, teacher, virtual teaching all last year, got back into reading. Recap of what I just said previously. For like the entire month of April into May, I was averaging five books a week. I remember that. I like could not get enough. I was like inhaling books to the point where my students were tracking my reading. <laughs> I forgot about that. 
and they were trying to compete with me and like surpass me collectively as classes they were trying to surpass how much I was reading and there was only one class that surpassed me and it was only one person and that's because she would read like a ton of fan fiction every day and again fan fiction is a legitimate form of reading fan fiction is books thank you for coming to my tech talk indeed hill we will die on Mm -hmm. i actually was talking to somebody the other day they were like oh i'm reading this doctor who fan fiction and i don't normally read fan fiction i don't have anything against it it's just not really my thing um but I asked them, I was like, hey, can you send me the link to that? And so they did. And I just looked at it. I, I haven't read it yet, but I added it to my like little list of things to check out if mm-hmm. I feel the need to. And I was looking at it and it's like 50,000 words. I'm like, that's a whole freaking book. Yeah. Like that's the length of The Great Gatsby. Yeah. That's longer than The Great Gatsby, isn't it? Just by like a couple hundred words. Okay. Well, whatever. Um, I don't care for F. Scott Fitzgerald and I'm glad he's dead because if he wasn't, I would punch him in the face, but we can talk about that another day. <laughs> Running joke say is I'm glad somebody's dead, but like, you know what I'm trying to get at here. Okay. Well, my students know that if I were to ever see F. Scott Fitzgerald, it would be like hands getting thrown on sight. <laughs> so good, good, good. One of these days we'll have to talk about, um, authors we'd throw hands with yeah that that that, that (laughs) might be a special episode one of these days and Um, obviously we mean this in good fun we are both not very violent individuals until it comes to video games but in person totally different story I'll say I'll fight somebody and then I'll be like "Mm, maybe not maybe we just we come this out over a cup of tea we are all bark and no bite yep (laughs) <laughs> that's why we were english majors indeed i will fight you with my words mm-hmm. like i might i might not like physically hit you but i will write an essay talking about how terrible you are which indeed again, is what being i will not feel bad all about. <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, anyway, <laughs> for anyone who's thinking of going into the humanities, there's your plug. Um, <laughs> do you want to talk about, so I read, I'm just looking back through the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read 24,509 pages this year, which feels like it's really low, but it also makes sense. I agree. Cause mine is 27,856. I think I read so. a lot of short books this year well what is your average book length mine's 357 mine's 335 yeah so we are we're like neck and neck right now okay yeah I don't know what's wrong with me like every time I see like I forget what there's one book that everyone on the internet was talking about that's about like like several inches thick and I don't remember the name of it but every time I see it they're like this book is so good I'm like yeah but it's also like as long as my arm (laughs) Was it the priori priori of the orange tree? That I struggle to it. say that word. That might be it. It's the like really pretty cover with the dragon on it. Yeah, that sounds about right. And like I know that I have the attention span to read a long book. It's just like every time oh, I read yeah. it, I'm just terribly intimidated. And I'm sure there's somebody out there who's like, well, that's because you millennials and zillennials or whatever are all addicted to your phones and don't have attention spans. Like, no, it's just because I am who I am as a person. So since we're talking about attention spans, Uh my longest book this year was 662 pages. Uh, It was the final book in Victoria Aviard's Red Queen series. So it was Mm -hmm. War Storm. And I, 662 pages, I think I read it in like two sittings in less than 24 hours. Good, good. Um, Little, little shame, a lot of pride in that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I think it was neither of these were the longest book that I read this year but um both Rule of Wolves which we can talk about another day um and Little Thieves actually will, we will be talking about it next episode oh yes yeah, spoiler alert um <laughs> both Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo and Little Thieves by Margaret Owen which I will be talking about later 
um both of those are pretty thick books especially considering they're young mm-hmm. adult books not that young adult books can't be long it's just they generally t- seem to cap out around like 300 to 400 words um, pages pages yep there we go <laughs> words <laughs> I'm really good at this um and I think I read both of those within like days of each other and the only reason I didn't yeah. read them fast was because like I had to work <laughs> well, like, what did, was your I longest did, book my longest book was 640 pages and that was Code okay. Girls. So that's a nonfiction book about, see, cause I, I, I listened to it on audiobook. So I also didn't actually realize it was so long. Um, what it was about like, wow, I am totally blanking. It had to do with World War II and women who worked in oh, yeah. decoding, um, decoding messages from the enemy yeah. basically. And I'm just going to plug it because I also, I really like history books that are Mm -hmm. like about women's history. Um, And I really enjoyed this one because it was, it it was just very fascinating to me because when you think about code breaking and stuff, you usually think of like people in STEM, basically like science and math and things like that. But they actually recruited a lot of women and girls who had been like humanities majors in college like had studied languages or had studied like English and history and things like that and I just thought that was very interesting because it showed such like a breadth of I don't know you don't normally think of the humanities as being the quote-unquote useful majors but yeah um I don't know I just really appreciated that and I was like yeah English majors anyway that's my little plug if you like history code girls by Liza Mundy is a good book well I just I just love women's history in general so I might be picking up that book in the new year Mm -hmm. I still have two books from so in my senior year of college I took a um I took a class that was like American women's history or something like that. It was very Mm -hmm. good, but we had two books that I still have, and we only read like chapters of them, Um, but I'm hoping to read them like all the way through in the new year. One was sort of about women and pop culture in like the second part of the 20th century, and the other one was about like women who fought in the Civil War which was very fascinating to me. But anyway, that's just me being a, should have been a history minor person, but I digress. Okay, but like, same. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, is still making that <laughs> weird noise, so I apologize. It shows that we're real human beings. We're mm-hmm. not like in a production studio. We are literally recording in like our living rooms and office spaces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like, it's just because every time I keep shifting because the light on the window in front of me is moving and I have to like turn my head. <laughs> and so not anyway. get blinded mm-hmm. so what was the most popular book that you read this year <laughs> the most popular book that I read this year was the catcher in the rye uh but I feel like I need to provide a little background for that take it away Rachel I teach that book so I have to read it every year Oof. yes and I love the book I do want to like have an Edna mode moment with Holden, like jump up on a, on a desk and whack him with a newspaper. (laughs) Um, Again, fictional character, but DJ Salinger is somebody that I would instantly throw hands with if I saw him in person. JD Salinger, you mean? Yep. (laughs) Yep. I just I, like to flip the letters around. I'm testing you, Maggie. I'm I, testing I you. I haven't read The Catcher in the Right. I don't really have any plans to. I don't know how I made it through like high school without reading The Catcher in the Rye, but somehow I did. And mm. I actually didn't read it in high school either. I didn't read it until I had to teach it. Huh. Yeah. I don't plan on teaching it, so I think I'm in the clear. Legit. Um, my most popular book was Six of Crows which I reread this year right before Shadow and Bone, um, the TV mm-hmm. show came out. Um, I would say that it is one of my favorite books. I used to say it was my most favorite book, but now I start to hesitate because it's so popular. <laughs> Here's one thing you need to know about me. I'm like the kid who tries to be a hipster, but like, <laughs> like oh, I liked that before it was cool. Like, 
I, I just, I, I've been trying to distance myself a little bit from the Grishaverse fandom because they're kind of crazy now that the show is out and mm-hmm. they're like stalking actors and crap like that. And I'm just like, eh. but also Six of Crows is a very good book and I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, And I just want to say that we both follow the actors on like Instagram and yeah. Twitter, but we're not like freakishly obsessed with them. Yeah, and like harassing them, which, you know, don't do that. They're real people. Right. But that, so. that's a conversation for another time. Um, but yeah, I listened to that probably spring of this year because I wanted to listen to that and Crooked Kingdom, but I ended up just listening to Six of Crows. I have them both on audiobook because I got an Audible subscription for like three months just so I could get them because they're Audible exclusives. Yeah, but um, you won't hear me um, advertising Amazon on here at any point because they're horrible. Um, anyway. Six of Crows. Um, I do want to jump back real fast to Mm -hmm. our shortest books of the year, just because my shortest book of the year has a freakishly long title for being so short. The title is longer than the book. (laughs) Seriously. So my shortest book was 128 pages, but it was a picture book. And it is titled Your Guide to Not Getting Murdered in a Quaint English Village. And it is written by Maureen Johnson and Jay Cooper. And it is one of my favorite books from this year. I could not wait to get my copy of it. I think it is so funny. What was I going to say? It is is a very good book. I also have it. Um, Also, just to clarify, when Rachel says picture book, this is not a picture book for your children. Not at all. Very not child appropriate. Very very not for a child. Um, And I think you will be able to tell once you first open it, but also just so we're clear. I mean, it it is titled Your Guide to Not Getting Murdered. So like, you know. Sometimes you have to be extra clear, okay? Use your critical thinking skills, please. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually remember we were talking about they were like giving away those signed book plates. Mm -hmm. um so but you had to have like a receipt that showed that you had bought the book which we both did I had my receipt except it wasn't itemized so oh no well I submitted it anyway I was like "Eh, we'll see what happens I got it the other day hey that's so exciting I uh didn't want to put in the effort so I didn't try um but it was very strange because I got home from work one day and there was just like this large envelope on my front porch that was not really labeled. And I was like, <laughs> what? And it was flat, which wasn't like any of the things I had ordered recently. I was like, what is yeah. it? And I opened it up. There's just like one little piece of paper, like the size of like a business card. And that's, and it was the, um, it was the label to put in the book that had their signatures That's on it. That's so cool. I, I love like, that. There wasn't even like a note saying like, hey, thanks for buying our book or anything. It was just a very strange envelope. And I was like, this seems about right. Maybe they were like, you give us a sketchy receipt. We give you a sketchy response. Mm-hmm. And that's just how it worked out. That's just how it worked out. <laughs> um, yeah. My shortest book was 72 pages and it was The Tea Dragon Society by Kay O'Neill. Um, which, I think you've talked to me about this book before. It is, it is a very good book. Um, there's three, they're, they're graphic novels. Um, mm-hmm. there's three of them. I actually have the third one because I happened to find it at a comic book store at, when I was visiting my parents for Thanksgiving. Um, but they're very like, they're just very soft and cozy books. Um, the art style is really gorgeous and there's like, they, they, there's little, they, they have, they're called tea dragons and they they grow plants on them that you can like use to make the tea it's I it's love just, that they're, they're very adorable they kind of look like little goats to be honest and I think that's great one of these days I love it yes anyway that was my shortest book of the year <laughs> what Sorry. was your average rating because mine was higher than I expected it to be mine was 4.1 which seems about right mine was 4.3 I, I feel like I gave a lot of five-star reads this year, but I also very distinctly remember giving a lot of threes and a couple of ones and some that I didn't even want to rate because I thought they were so bad, but you can't give zero stars on Goodreads, which this is our Goodreads recap. So, gosh, 
<laughs> use Storygraph instead, anyway. Which um, we both use and both really love. Yes. I don't know if they do a yearly recap. We'll have to look at that later. Well, they, they they have their graphs that you can look at for each year. Oh, that's true. That would be kind of cool to look at another time because they divide them up by genre and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm just looking to see now. I'm curious. What was my lowest rated book this year? Oh, (laughs) I think Um, we have the same one. I did rate one book zero stars because I had mixed feelings about it, but I didn't feel comfortable rating it. If that Mm -hmm. makes sense. Like I did not rate it. Yeah. I I just felt like I I didn't really enjoy it, but I also knew it wasn't for me. So I didn't feel comfortable giving it a low rating. Um, Anyway. Uh, I rated two books, two stars, which were um, An Ember in the Ashes and The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, and I will not be taking questions at this time. Interesting. I thought, never mind. I, I, you know, that was my least favorite book, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires from Mm -hmm. this year. And that's what I gave a one star to. (laughs) (laughs) I... I have only given one star to apparently two books. I'm looking at my Goodreads now. We can talk about that another time. Um, Anyway, what was your highest rated book on Goodreads? Um, The Last Olympian. (laughs) And what was yours? I got Rachel to read all of Percy Jackson this year, but I'm sure we'll talk about that. It wasn't that hard. No, okay, but, but, okay, but I was reading. Crooked Kingdom, which technically I still haven't finished. Yeah, and it's been and like seven months. I was having an emotional time with it, okay? No spoilers, Rachel. I'm not going to. And Maggie goes, hey, you know what you should read? It's a nice series. It'll bring you happiness. <laughs> Percy Jackson. All right, listen, listen. Compared... Six of Crows compared to Percy Jackson. They will both make you cry. But (laughs) Percy Jackson is like slightly less heartbreaking. Very minimally less heartbreaking. Maggie, my favorite characters still didn't make it to the end or they have no friends. I'm sorry. So like, gosh. (laughs) I tried, okay? Um, well, for the record, sh- I do love them. I do love the Percy Jackson books. But they're maybe not the books to say, hey, read these to bring you joy. Okay, I feel like I need to defend myself a little bit here. I read Percy Jackson when I was younger than we are now. Like, I read them before I was in college. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. I think it was, it, it would have either been, like, my later high school years or, like, not my later high school years, my later middle school years or like my early high school years. So I was probably like 12 to Mm 14-ish. And so they have been a part of my childhood. Yeah. And so for me, the Percy Jackson books have always been comfort books that I reread because I know everything is going to turn out okay, even if it's sad along the way. So I think what happened in our discussion here, (laughs) I was like, hey, Rachel's upset. Here's my favorite comfort books. Forgetting that Rachel has not read them before. Technically, she... I'd read the first two. But okay, not the whatever. last ones. <laughs> Point being, I made an error in judgment, which is fine. We all do those. And we're still friends. We've moved past this. And it was a good error in judgment because I loved them. Mm-hmm. And we are going to be talking about the Percy Jackson series in a later collection of episodes because I think they're so both so important to us now Mm -hmm. that it's something that we're not going to avoid talking about indeed we will have some good discussion about them um fitting our theme of mythology apparently my highest rated book on goodreads was excuse me it was working on a song the lyrics of Hades Town by I always butcher her name I've looked it up so many times and every time I forget it's I think it's Aeneas or Aeneas um Mitchell so she is the like writer and creator behind the Broadway musical Hades Town, which has had several iterations before it finally made its way to Broadway, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
but basically this book was just her like the lyrics of all the songs as they appear in the Broadway version and then her talking about different iterations of the songs different iterations Mm -hmm. of the musical so it's very much like a niche (laughs) like you have to like Hadestown in order to like this book or you have to at least like musical theater in order to like yeah but I just really enjoyed it because I like knowing all those little details of here's how this thing that you love came to be but that's also just because I'm a huge nerd what I know so shocking a huge nerd starting a podcast about books that she likes what weird (laughs) anyway so that's pretty Uh, much our oh go ahead I was just gonna say I was never into Greek mythology until this year like growing up ancient Egypt was always my thing and Egyptian mythology was my thing. So I loved the Cain Chronicles by Rick Riordan. Um, but I had never really gotten into the Percy Jackson books because I never really knew Greek mythology, but because of Maggie that has started changing. And I appreciate that. I, I'm going to go on this tangent, which we can cut out later if you don't like it. <laughs> um, so the only, the main reason that I like Greek mythology is because I read Percy Jackson growing up um there there were there's a lot of us out there and I probably know less than I'd like to but not enough to like do more reading about it anyway but I like but you know you know more than me and I Correct. send you random questions all the time mm-hmm. um so I like a lot of mythology adjacent things like Hades Town, or I can't remember something else off the top of my head. But one of my favorite things from the last like year, year and a half, I guess because I started playing in 2020, is the video game Hades, um, which is if if you're in the video game realm, you might have heard of it. It's an indie game. Um, basically, you play as the son of Hades, and you keep trying to escape the Greek underworld. So there's a lot of mythological figures, um, Orpheus and Eurydice, who are also characters in Hades Town, make an appearance in the game. There's all the gods and things like that. But anyway, one time Rachel came over and I was like, "Hey, Rachel, I'm going to show you this. Um, I'm going to show you this video game about Greek mythology." And now Rachel's playing it too. So like, you know, if you can't get your friends to enjoy your hobbies, just find something that you both have in common about it, and they'll be sucked right in. <laughs> I legitimately thought you were going to go full embarrassing with what I said. So I'm going to do it to myself. I, I wanted to spare your <laughs> dignity a little bit with. Like, oh, it's okay. Kind of, like, throw, up, throw it all It's out all there. good. But I'm going to provide a little bit of context. Okay. So in Percy Jackson, Dionysus is not described as attractive. He's kind of a jerk. He is very much a jerk. And. I just had that picture of Dionysus in my head. As like this grouchy old guy running a camp for teenagers. Right, like a crotchety old man, like beer Mm -hmm. belly situation, not exactly traditionally attractive. And Maggie starts playing the game and we see Dionysus and I just go, why is he attractive? (laughs) And I was like, "Uh, I don't know. Because I just had this, like, obviously, purely for Dionysus. Purely. Because I haven't confessed to you that Ares is my favorite on multiple occasions. Hmm. (laughs) Hey, everybody. So we have decided now that we are going to break up this episode into two episodes because we just got so into talking about our favorite reads from this year that we went off on a couple of tangents but a couple of really good tangents and we wanted to make sure to include those in our next episode so we are cutting this here with our goodreads recap and next week you will have our top 10 reads from this year and don't forget you can find us on twitter and instagram at book expert pod or you can email us at notthebookexpert at gmail.com. We will see you next week. What's the name of our show again? Oh, right. Okay. Now I got to put my serious podcaster face back on. Not that anyone's going to see my face, but it's... I was going to say, we have serious podcasting faces. <laughs> it would be a surprise to me. Okay. Um... Can we do anything seriously?